here's the thing. There is a has many relationship. There is a has many through relationship. And then there is a has one through relationship that you can put on top of has many through relationship. And now you can use latest of many. Got it? Hello, lover friends. Let's talk about Laval 12.2 with new context methods. The the body can be one of many relationships and much more. Let's go. When chunking a collection, you normally preserve the keys, but sometimes you don't want that. In this example here inside Tinker, while I'm showing you this array of blog posts here, actually it's already a collection um, of some blog posts, summer travel guide, latest iPhone review, basic cooking tips, your favorite blog posts. And we also have some keys, which are kind of the tags or connected or category of this post. And this is a collection. If we run this, you can see we get this collection back with our keys. And what we can also do here is chunk this by the size and let's give me a size of two. So this means this will be now chunked by the size of two. So we get two collections now and both have two items in it and both here still have this key. The same situation is here, two items in this collection and we still have the key, which is mostly what you want. But sometimes you don't want to preserve these keys and this is now what you can do. So as a second parameter, we can return false or let's make it a little bit better to read. We have a size of two and we have the preserve keys value, which is by default set to true. And if we set this to false, let's run this again. We still get two collection items and both of them have two items like expected, but now we have directly the items in here without the keys. So depending on how you have structured your array, sometimes you want to get rid of those keys. And this is something that you now can do for the chunk method on the collection class by telling you preserve keys by setting it to false. Thank you, Liam. The famous DD dump and die debugger in Laravel is now even more powerful with test responses. While testing, you often find yourself in a situation where you're going to make a request to a specific page and then you dump, want to dump out the content. So here in this test, we are making sure we have some users in the database, which we will need later. And then we're making here this get request to this dump page here, which currently just returns the welcome view. And let's imagine we want to take a look what this response now looks like. So let's just dump it out. Let's run the test and we can see what we get back here, which is a test response. And here we have all the information about the response with the request, um, the query, the server information. So a lot is going on before headers here, before somewhere down here session. Yeah, you can see this is a lot, but at some point we'll see the body, I don't find it here. There's too much going on. Similar to this, what we can also do, which is just the same here, we can just dump it out by making this call here. This gives us back. So this D, D method is also on the response. But yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit difficult to get the body, but not anymore. Now we have a new method, which is called D, D body. Let's run this again, in which you can see what we get back here is now just the body which in this case is a string from the HTML page, which we return. So this is very useful while you are testing, but that's not it. You can also provide some keys if the response is a JSON response. So let's go back here and let's say we're returning now an array and let's give this a key of users and all of our users like this. So this will be now a JSON response because Laval will always translate this into JSON when returning. And if we're going to do the same now, we still get the body, which in this case is already an array back um, returned here with all the users. But what we can also do is, um, let me show this again. It's an array with our users key and then all the users. But what we can also do now is we can say we're interested in the key called users and you can see now I get only back the array of our 10 users. So this is now the new DD body method, which is very helpful when you want to debug and just to make sure what your response of a request inside your test looks like. And we have DD body, which just gives you the body and we can provide the key to just take a look 
at a specific key of a JSON response. Thank you, Sam. Then we also have some new methods on the context service in Laravel. In Laravel, we have this concept of context, which lets you add and retrieve information throughout requests or jobs. Let me give an example. Here we have our welcome route here. And one way to use um, add context is by using a middleware. So let's add a middleware, which I have already prepared, which is called add context. And if we take a look, we're making use of the context facade here in order to add a UL. And we're taking the current one for the request, which the request were used with. And then we are also creating some kind of trace ID, but just using a unique string. And now we can use this throughout the request in different ways. But the most common is if we go back to my route here is by logging something out. And I'm just saying here, hello from welcome. And now if I'm going to hit this route, let's refresh this, let's get back. And here now on the right, let's make this a little bigger. This is now my log file. Here you can see I get the information, hello from welcome but I also get the context information, which is the URL in our case and the trace ID, which I have added. So this is one way of using the context. There are many ways you can use this, but this is one very common way by using maybe a middle word and adding some stuff that you want to see with every locked message. And then we see it here. And then you can use this for debugging, for example. But now we have some new method on context. Let me show you. So, we have a new method called context increment. So let's maybe just use a count here. And by default, it's being incremented by one. So if I refresh the page, let's get back here. We see this new entry here and we should see here a count of one. And of course, if I have this now three times, we should see three for this count here. Refresh the page again. And fair enough, we have now this count of three. But yeah, as you can see in this example, this maybe is not that useful. But let me show you a different example now. I have this user import command. And what we're doing here, we have this command which we can run with import users. We truncating the users table. We are getting our users from a CSV file. We're skipping the headers row. We're getting rid of empty lines at the beginning, end or wherever. Then we are formatting our data here so that it's in the format of our user model here and then we're chunking up data and then we are looping over those chunks here and making some inserts and then we're going to print out this user um, import was completed message inside the logs let's try this together now php artisan import users here we go this looks good let's check our logs and here we have now this new entry users imported completely so this works, but yeah, sometimes you also want to add to this message the count of users that were imported. And of course, there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can um, count this at the beginning, the number of lines. Um, you maybe count the chunks here. You can maybe check what was the count of the user tables before and after. So yeah, there are different ways to do this, but one way you could very easily now do this as well is with the context. So let's add an increment method here to our context for users imported counts. And we're going to increase this now by the count of our users by the chunk size, which in our case, I think was just 10. Yeah, like this here. And I think this should already do this. Let's run our import users command again. Okay, we have this new entry, use import completely, user import count 180. And that's the exact count of the users that I have in my CSV file. And yeah, that's just one way of how you could use the new context increment and decrement method. By default, they are added to your log, so you will see all that information there. But as a reminder here, of course, you can always get and retrieve all those items from your context yourself and use it however you want to. But I found this as a really nice example for using those new methods. Thank you, Matt. And last, let's talk about how you can become one of many. We are looking at a test here. In this application, we have a user and the user has posts and those posts have comments. 
And here I have this method here, which just gives me a user with two different posts. And each of those posts have one comment, which I get back here from this method. So then on the user model, we're going to run this method latest comment. So our goal is to get the latest comment on any of the posts of this user. It doesn't matter which posts it belongs to, just the latest comment based on the ID in this case. And then we're making sure that the latest comment ID is the same as the one from comment two, which is the one which was created later. So this should have um, the bigger ID. Okay, if we try to run this, this will not work yet. Um, attempt to read property ID on null. And that's because this method is not given yet. So let's take a look at the user model. I have already defined the post relationship, but now we want to do something new. Public function latest comment. And a couple of ways to do this. The one that we want to take a look at is by using the has one through relationship. So let me show you what this means. We are going to return here this. We're starting with has many through and we want to get comments. Let's use the model class and we want to do this through our post class. All right, so that's typical. That's a typical has many through relationship. Give me all the comments for this user, um, which we get through the post model and since post model. And since we already have this relationship, this also already works. Okay, and then now we want to translate this into a has one through relationship. This is what this one method does, has many through into a has one through. And this has the big advantage that we will only get one result back. And this is what we're interested in here, just to get one result back and not a collection. And then in order to do this, we're going to order this by the comments ID. And let's make sure this is descending. And I think this should already be it. Let's take a look. Let's run this test. And fair enough, it's already passing. Perfect. So the thing I showed you here was already working. Nothing new here has many through, has one through, this nice one helper here. Everything like that was already working as before. But something that was not working um, before was some of the method like latest of many. So this is something that was already given, but it was not working yet with the has one through relationship. And this should do exactly the same. You can see this test, which we just took a look at, also still works. And this now reads very well. And next to this, we also have, of course, the oldest of many, which in our case will fail now. But yeah, this is also given. Let's change this back to latest of many. Okay, back to our test here. This is already working. Now we have a second one here where we want to make this based on the created at field of the comments model. So now we're checking that the latest ID should be the one of comment one because here inside this method, I make sure that this is the one which was created later. Okay, let's try to run this. This should fail now. It does because yeah, um, the IDs do not match. So how can we achieve this? We also have another method which you can now also use, which is just called of many. And here you have two fields that you can provide. First is the column. And in our case, it's the created at field. And the second one is the aggregate to use, which in our case is max, but max is also the default. That's why this is great. If I run the test now, you can see this is also passing. So let's get back to our test here. This is the second one, which is now also passing, where we now make sure that it's based on the created at field. So let's take a look. This is, yeah, again, a very nice way to use the has many through relationship translate this into the has one through and on this one we now have methods that we can use like latest of many oldest of many or just of many which gives you a lot of possibilities and i also think this reads very well thank you caleb that's all i wanted to show you today thank you all for all of your contributions don't forget to leave us some likes on the video and see you the next time bye